So good evening, good morning, good day, everyone. Those of you who are signing in from different time zones, welcome to Singapore. My name is Imran and I will be your host this evening. And this is a very special tour for me, not only because as some of you have noticed, uh, it's my birthday today. Uh, I actually celebrated it yesterday, but uh, on the uh, other hand, this is an annual light up and behind me, let me see if I can position myself properly. Uh, behind me, you will see uh, the beginning of Serangoon Road here in Little India in Singapore. And although uh, Singapore's Indian population is about 10% of its population, their contribution to the community and to the culture and national identity is definitely outsized. And we will get a feel for that today. Now, why is this so special over here today? Because uh, this is Deepa Valley, sometimes known as Diwali. Uh, it is one of the most uh, famous and prominent temples, uh, festivals, excuse me, festivals on, in the Hindu calendar. Uh, and it is the Festival of Lights. And that is why Little India is lit up. Why is it the Festival of Lights? I know you're excited, as excited as me, to start walking through and seeing uh, the crowds and uh, uh, literally uh, fighting our way through uh, everyone in the bazaars. But why is it the Festival of Lights? Because it celebrates the triumph of good over evil, of knowledge over ignorance. And of course, uh, as in many other cultures, light represents good, light represents knowledge. You may also see uh, in this uh, particular light behind me, uh, which is growing out of the uh, left side of my head, uh, that there are musical instruments and a peacock. Uh, those are uh, very much uh, related to Indian culture. The peacock, very auspicious animal. In fact, peacock feathers are sometimes found on, uh, or found on two of the uh, very prominent goddesses uh, that we have in the Hindu religion. But uh, what are we going to do? We're going to walk through some uh, side streets and lanes of Little India. The things that I would like you to keep an eye out for, of course, are the uh, stalls and the type of things they're selling, the clothing that you will see everyone wear, uh, and uh, the flower garlands, and even the noise, the Bollywood music, the languages, everything. Uh, it's really a very, very festive occasion over here, uh, and everyone is enjoying themselves. So, as always, please, please, let's make this a conversation. If you have comments, if you have questions, if you want to add some information, please, please feel free to do that through the chat. So, uh, it is just past 8.20 p.m. here in Singapore. The temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. And luckily, it doesn't seem like it's going to rain. So although I'm carrying my camera, uh, my camera, uh, my umbrella, I'm hoping that I will not need to use it at all. It is a little bit humid, but that is Singapore for you. Two, less than two degrees from the equator, so it is the tropics. So, shall we begin? You can see the traffic also, uh, and the traffic is getting uh, quite, quite impatient with all the jaywalkers that we have here. If those of you who have an impression of Singapore of being neat, orderly, uh, and a little bit sterile, well, maybe today is the day that that stereotype is going to be broken because today is anything but orderly. It's still neat and it's still clean, but it's anything but orderly. Now, uh, you can see there's a lot of people lining up here, and that's because uh, they are uh, there is henna painting going on. Henna is one of the ways in which... <coughs> Diwali is celebrated. I'm zooming in on. And the night bazaar, the night market is, of course, uh, also a lot of preparations going on for Deepavali. Deepavali takes place in the towards the end of October, I, if I'm not mistaken, on the 24th of October. All right, so let's. Yeah, Holly, I hope you're going to be able to visit us over here and do some uh, henna painting. 
over here. Uh, or you can just get some henna uh, yourself uh, around wherever you live. I'm sure you can do that. Uh, maybe even uh, find an artist. Now, this is one of my favorite sweet shops. I'm not going to cut the queue, but I will try and take you closer. Normally, not so busy. But of course, this being <coughs> this being Deepavali. Okay, the, you know the red jelly? It is very busy. People are lining up to get their sweet meats. The Indian sweets or mithai, very sweet. If you have a sweet tooth, this is what you need to uh, get into. And the lights. So you probably recognize some of the musical instruments up there. And of course, the lotus flower in between as well. And this goes on the whole street. This is Sarangoon Road, the main drag of Little India here in Singapore. This area is the heart of, at the heart of the Indian community. And that is why it is lit up for this festival, the Festival of Light. We will cross this road a little bit later, so I will show you uh, these lights. But for the moment, we're going to go down this small lane, Campbell Lane, and just take a look at the type of things that are being sold. So edibles for all the gifts, uh, for all the guests that will be coming to visit you to celebrate Deepavali with you. Savory stuff as well. And this is the lane that we are going to go down. I will give you a vertical here in case you want to take a a shot uh, that is uh, with an extended uh, point of view. So with, in three, I'm going to take it vertical for a short while. One, two, three. Very, very colorful. Little India is always colorful and during this festival, even more so than usual. So I'm going to now take it back to horizontal in three, one, two, three. Yeah, absolutely. As I was saying earlier, if anyone had impressions of Singapore being a orderly place, today is the day that we're going to break some of those stereotypes from you. Everyone is here on, at this night market, basically preparing for Deepavali, the Hindu festival of light. <clears throat> Approximately 10% of Singapore's population profess Hinduism, but it is uh, celebrated throughout the entire uh, city. And we all basically do have Hindu friends, and uh, this is the time that we get to eat some of their special food. So let's try and fight our way through some of these crowds. Look at the garlands up here as well. You zoom in on a few garlands. I will, for those of you who are interested, uh, be doing uh, a more regular, if I can put it that way, tour of, of little walkabout of Little India on the 17th, October 17th or October uh, 16th evening if you are in the US. And I will also take you into uh, a hawker center which has over 100 stalls. Uh, we'll get to see some food there.
Uh, NC, it is wonderful. We also have Deepavali as a public holiday over here. So from a very, very young age, the uh, students, the, the kids, they start to get exposed to these sort of things. If any of you would like me to pause somewhere, just give me a holler. Many of the garlands that you are seeing here are not made from real flowers. The ones that I zoomed in on, of course, were real flowers. <clears throat> Some clothing as well. It's a long story. <laughs> so, hello, Voyagers. Hello, everyone. Those of you who have joined me recently, joined the experience recently, we are taking a walk around Little India where they are, we are celebrating the Hindu festival of lights or Deepavali. And we've just walked through a small little night market on Campbell Lane. And we're going to continue. Uh, what time is the night market open? Uh, you mean what time is it open until? Uh, it probably uh, is open most of the day. I would suspect uh, it probably starts to wind down maybe around 11, 10, 30, 11. See some Hindu icons as well. And there is Ganesh, the elephant guard, in a very interesting pose, checking everyone out as they walk by. more food. You can see the boxes over here that have been placed in case you want to get your uh, your food wrapped uh, or packed in a box as a gift. Uh, hi, Shokani. Shokani, I believe you're talking about the uh, Hawker Center in uh, Teka, Cent Teka Market. And that's the one that I will be walking through uh, on uh, October the 17th morning Singapore time. Uh, NC gifts can be uh, sweetmeats, meaning uh, something sweet. Uh, they can also be... Uh, uh, Depending on how close you are, you can also give what the, in the something that's been borrowed from the Chinese tradition or red packets, which are essentially uh, envelopes with money in them to the youngsters, to the kids. And today I have to be very careful crossing the roads because uh, it is very, very busy. It's almost crazy. We're going to cross this road. Walk a little bit further to my to your left, but I do want to cross it, uh, and I'll show you inside over here in this street. Uh, if any of you are visiting Singapore on a budget, uh, there are many hostels also down here uh, and in the next lane. Yeah, and see, this is basically very very authentic. It's uh, very much. Uh, like uh, India, quite a little bit of a different flavor from Chinatown, which is a little bit more uh, commercialized. This one is has retained a lot more of its authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah, crossing the streets and see, this is one of the places that you're going to see people jaywalk, almost with impunity. 
and the drivers get very, very angry about it, very impatient. So here is one place you're going to see a lot of horns or honking. So this is one of the side streets. It's not really the main uh, part of uh, Little India that I want to show you, but uh, it's on the way because I want to cross back onto the main Sarangoon Road from the next street, which we are at now. But you can see fresh produce, very much uh, <clears throat> something that not just members of the Indian community, but all communities sometimes will come here to buy. Uh, in the market that I talked about, uh, Teka Center, you will find uh, garam masala, spices, all sorts of other things. A good example of shop house architecture behind this truck. And let's see if I can cross without getting myself run over. Uh, you ask and see if this is mostly local. No, most of the produce is not local. In fact, we produce very little of our own food. Much of it comes from across the border in Malaysia and from other countries in the region and even as far away as uh, India. We're also very relieved because Malaysia, which is our northern neighbor, uh, they had, and I know we've got uh, Shokani in here, who's one of our Malaysia guides. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> they had, uh, in order to try and control the prices of chicken in their domestic market, they had placed a ban on export of chicken. And so Singapore uh, had relied on Malaysia for almost 30% of its chicken, fresh chicken, before this ban. And now they just announced that they're going to restart the export of chicken. So uh, that is good news for us here, particularly for our national dish, which is or unofficial national dish, which is chicken rice. Yes, it is great news. Thank you, Pam. Thank you very much. Uh, those of you who can leave a tip, it's much appreciated. It helps me to push out more content on Hago and experiment with new tours as well. You can see how crowded it is with the traffic and of course with me jaywalking on the road here. <clears throat> I have to be careful I'm not going to get hit by from behind. All sorts of things being sold here in Little India. Thank you, Holly. One of the most popular things are, of course, these bangles. You can see over here the nice, colorful bangles. Thank you, Shokani. So I was talking about our uh, Malaysia guide. Shokani is one of them. Uh, in fact, I was going through his profile and I realized that he has he won an award in uh, 2015 if I'm not mistaken Shokani one of the top guides in Malaysia as recognized by the Malaysian government so 2011 there you go so if you do get a chance to visit Malaysia virtually through his tours I'm sure it'll be worthwhile for you so some fresh flowers garlands now the garlands are used for many different things uh, they are used as offerings to go to the gods. We will be walking to a Hindu temple a little bit later. Uh, <clears throat> they are also used for other things. So just uh, simply by people who will... I'm going to try and put up a, uh, a uh, image for you here.
So you can see that women will also use garlands simply uh, to tie their hair as well. So let's see if we can cut across to the other side and make our way to the top of the street. Meanwhile, I'll give you a little bit more information on the religious and ethnic breakdown of Singapore as well. Okay, so here we are back on Sarangoon Road. We're going to cross the road over here. You can see a lot of effort is put into this light up for Deepavali. There's a, there are other lights up, light ups here in Singapore to celebrate other uh, religious festivals. There's a light up for Hari Raya or Eid, as it's sometimes called. There's the Christmas light up, which should be coming up very soon. Of course, they're in different parts of the city. So for the light up for Hari Raya, it will take place in the traditional Malay district of Singapore, which is in Kampong Glam. And the Christmas light up is in Orchard Road. Maybe some of you had the opportunity to take my walk down Orchard Road uh, one evening. I did do a walk down Orchard Road. So here we have a nice view of the light up. Some of you may have noticed I'm jaywalking. All right, it's gone green. Thank you, NC. So let me stop in the middle and see if I can give you a nice shot. And a vertical one quickly. One, two, three. And back to horizontal in one, two, three. And off the road safely. So we'll carry on down this Sangoon Road. I'm sure all uh, uh, there are many light ups in your different cities at various points of the year. Uh, what do you guys think of this light up over here? Wonderful. I'm going to go inside here because one of the things that Little India is famous for is for its jewelry. The uh, Indian community is very big on gold jewelry and there are a lot of gold shops all over Little India. In fact, it has the highest concentration of gold shop uh, anywhere in the city. So I'm going to walk inside for a little bit show you some of this gold jewelry that is being sold here. 22 karat, yes, you're right, uh, Tariq. More henna artists. So you can see the henna often comes in these sort of packets and it is squeezed out by the artist to make these sort of designs. And the artists themselves so uh, we have lots of uh, henna artists and here are two of them. So thank you. You can see the gold jewelry is doing a brisk trade as well. Again, Deepavali in some sense 
uh, also for retailers is a big, big time, uh, kind of like Christmas for uh, many European cities. Uh, thank you, Adam. I haven't seen Oxford Street at Christmas probably for a couple of decades, so I'm not sure how uh, that is working out. Uh, NC, uh, no, Singapore is uh, one of the safest cities in the world, so by and large, uh, we don't have such uh, crime, uh, certainly not crime that the retailers uh, are worried about. Uh, CCTV cameras are everywhere. Uh, Singapore is a small island, which means that if someone does do something, they really can't run very far. Uh, sometimes they do across the channel and go across to Malaysia or even fly off to Thailand. But we have good cooperation with the Thai and Malaysian police. So ultimately, uh, they do come home and stand in front of a judge. Let me see if I can take you a little closer to this artist. Give you another view of it, keeping the We have very, very talented artists here. Uh, and let's leave them with some privacy. Maybe some of you can hear the music in the background as well. Most of the Indians that we have in Singapore are South Indians uh, who have migrated from the Tamil Nadu province of India. Put up another slide for you, showing you where many of the local Indians migrated from. And so Tamil is one of the four official languages here in Singapore. The other ones being English, which is the language of education, all the way from primary to tertiary levels. Malay, which is the national language. And Mandarin and Tamil. I think I've listed all four. You can see that almost every second shop is a jewelry shop. And uh, in case you're wondering, today's gold price. 22 carats, someone mentioned that earlier, $72.50 per gram, that is Singapore dollars. One, Singapore, uh, one US dollar is approximately 1.45 Singapore dollars. Uh, <clears throat> that was Tamil one of the uh, official languages. In fact, if we come across another sign, I will show it to you again, Virginia, Tamil. So for the ladies in the audience, what do you think about the sort of jewelry that is being sold here? Is this the sort of stuff that would catch your eye? Oh, Dawn, uh, you have me. I'm not sure, but 
It depends on, of course, how much gold they will weigh the gold. They will take a price for the workmanship. Now, you saw that the price of gold was approximately $72 per gram. So they will weigh, take out the number of grams. Uh, and then, of course, if there are stones in there, depending on whether they are real or not. So long answer, I am not sure. And none of them have prices listed. Yeah, these are pretty big and chunky. Uh, now, we have to go back to the Indian culture and tradition to understand why, because gold is a store of value uh, in Indian culture and tradition historically. So, of course, that is one of the reasons why there is such heavy jewelry here. And you can see in some of these jewelry, there are religious motifs that have been crafted in. I guess it's easier to melt 22 carats, Frank C. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why uh, historically Indian jewelry, it's also maybe easier to carve. They are heavy and they are heavy. And we've come to some clothing. Yeah, it's a very, very personal thing, this uh, jewelry. And I guess if one has, uh, has really grown up with uh, smaller, tinier pieces of jewelry, then uh, this can be a little bit of a, a jump. All right. Now we're coming close to the final part of the tour, but you may have glimpsed before that truck went through the pagoda over there and let's let this mover go by as well but you can see this is the gopuram or the pagoda of the kalyaman temple virama kalyaman temple let me take it vertical for you as well in case you want a picture of it so on three one two three You can see the carvings in the in the temple and I'm going to take you across the road and take you closer uh, to show you some of these this craftsmanship as well and let's see if I can take it back to horizontal now in three one two three Some of you may notice the name of this road, Belly Lois Road. This is the name of a, uh, a Jewish trader who moved to Singapore in the early 1900s and got very big in the cattle trade. So there we have this Gopuram. Now this temple is normally not open at this time. Let me give you another vertical from here. So one, two, three. Maybe that's too big. And back to horizontal in three, one, two, three. What I'm going to do now is maybe zoom in on some of the work, the carvings to show you how intricate, yes, uh, it is. And and I'm going to also walk towards the front. Absolutely, this is a South Indian style temple. 
The Gopuram is very, very traditionally South Indian, this pagoda. The North Indian temples are not so intricate or ornate. Maybe someone has some information on the various deities, gods and goddesses that we are seeing. And I'm going to bring it lower now so that we can, we're not going to go inside the temple, but I will show you what we can see from out here. So behind this pillar is the main deity, is Kali. She's a destroyer of evil. Let me see if I can zoom in on her. That is her there with the priest walking around nearby or priests. can see some worshippers as well. So I'm going to take the opportunity to cross the road and give you a nice shot of the pagoda as well. So there we have the pagoda. Now, the idea behind this pagoda in the early days, and this temple is from the 1880s, uh, was that if you could see this Gopuram, the pagoda, from wherever you lived, you could then face it and pray towards it. It was not necessary for you to visit the temple in person. I will also give you a vertical, hopefully, we will have a red light soon and the traffic will stop. So once the traffic stops, I'll also give you a... Uh, Heather, uh, sorry, Virginia, the red and yellow sign on top. Uh, well, you can see there's a trident there. That is a Hindu symbol. Uh, other than that, I can't really answer your question, uh, but it must somehow reflect the gods and goddesses that are inside. So we do have that trident. All right, so the traffic has stopped in case you want to take a picture. I'll also take it horizontal, uh, ver vertical in one, two, three. See if we can get the Hilton sign out of the way. Okay, we've lost the red light. I'm going to take it back to horizontal. I imagine so, NC. I imagine so. Because uh, Kalyaman, the goddess in there, she is an embodiment or a form of Parvati, who is Shiva's consort. And this is this is her temple. Show you some more of the lights here. And someone was asking about the the language. You can see it over there in that in, in the blue sign. That is Tamil. All right, so 
Folks, we have come very much to the end of today's walk. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Uh, any comments, reactions from people? Uh, this is a once in a year event, this light up and the little market that we walk through. So I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it gave you a little bit of a different flavor of Singapore than the orderly, neat Singapore that perhaps we are uh, used to and that we see in many other parts of the city. Uh, Singapore, it's Little India, has a lot of character and uh, I think it was on display. So thank you very much. Uh, those of you who just left a tip, uh, as I mentioned, if you can leave a tip, uh, it always helps me to produce more content. Uh, if you cannot, uh, then please consider writing a review uh, or and of course following me I will for those of you who are interested be doing a walkabout during the day of this little India district on the 17th morning Singapore time which makes it 16th night US Eastern time so uh, Virginia uh, wasn't sure what to expect from the description uh, yes uh, all right actually uh, you never know what to expect when you are here in Little India. Little India has a character all of its own. Uh, and it's always wonderful to show it uh, to you. So, But thank you for that. I think I will go back and read it. Uh, and um, yes, you're right. I should put that in the description. All right. So uh, thank you again. And uh, hopefully we will see you on the 17th, if not on one of my future tours. So please do follow me if you haven't already done so all right thank you and uh, bye bye have a great uh, day uh, with those of you who are starting your day uh, and uh, everyone else thank you again all right bye